Hello traders and welcome to my weekly review. I've spent some time, a good hour or so, just, just plowing through the charts, flipping through the fibs, the key pivots, the six pivots I look for being a pivot trader than I am. And uh, so I'm now bringing you the results of all that analysis that I've done. I'm going to share that with you and then um, I would be uh, interested in your feedback, but um, otherwise just sit tight and let's just go through these charts. First up, Dow uh, made a new high and it got rejected. The um, and a reversal bar on Thursday. We're miles away from the eight, and guess what? We closed the eight um, and came right back to where just under where we were at the beginning of the week. So we gapped up. To 15,488 on the Sunday. On the Monday, we, we retested that. On the Fed day, we made new highs, and then we spent the rest of the day, rest of the next two days, coming back. So where are we going from here? This, uh, I think, with that, those two selling bars on Thursday, I would want. To, I think we're going to we're going to close that gap. So 15,400. I think we are now looking at a gap fill. So, in which case, I wouldn't want to get short here. If you look at the RSI tailing over, uh, sorry, RSI, yeah, coming off the um, 70 position, are stochastics crossing, bending down. So the stochastics are high. I want to short when the stochastics are high. I do not want to short when we. Um, are, are low. So I would look for a retest of 15,580. Let me mark that on. That is a major pivotal area there. I'm going to leave that on my chart. It may well get a retest of that star. It's common to get a retest of the star. So these are the couple of levels I'm looking at. 15,580 to 616 to short to at least close that gap. And I think uh, the, month, the gap is monthly R1. If we can't hold that then you know we're coming down here. So we had a, a big powerful run up uh, charged into a new high. If you make a new high and then uh, close lower next day, I mean, to me that's a rejection of the highs and we saw that on Friday. Okay, so Euro elections, uh, not Euro, German elections, let that one slip didn't I? Um, if you look at the weekly chart on the left here, the, the Euro had a really nice run, that's a very powerful run and the major resistance here is 13650. I would look for a pullback to 13450. I think that that's a hesitant bar. I mean, last week we were a little not sideways by the gap up on Sunday opening, so that's going to be critical. But look at this 13420 area here, massive support. So we've busted up there. I think at the very least we're going to want to come and test that. So 13420 is a good pullback area for the Euro US. So topping tails up here may well just drift, may just hang up here for a while and then if we close above that monthly R1 or close below it on Monday then that will be the key for me. I think we are stretched up here, the RSI stochastics on the daily certainly show that. We've got um, it's a very, that is a very powerful bar on the weekly though, and that you can see if you look left, huge amount of support at this one, three, four, fifty area, forty, fifty area there. So um, I think that is the best plan. Pound really stretched its legs. Uh, a couple of days of selling, so not many miles away from the sort of selling that we saw on the Dow. 200 MA up here. Look at the, we're miles away from the weekly eight. So I, I think we need to, at the very least, pause for breath here. We're not even close to the daily eight. 
I think we could easily come down to 15770. On the data front, we've got UK GDP on Thursday. It's pretty quiet. Euro inflation on Monday morning. So I'll be definitely my screen for that one. Lots of speakers on Monday. Tuesday's quiet. Wednesday, we've got durable goods in the US. And Thursday, excuse me one second. Thursday we've got UK and US GDP, so I think we could drift lower in the early part of the week and then get influenced by that GDP. But um, we got into a lot of resistance up here. I mean, towards the end of the year, we might well see 170 on the power. 170 is the, is the next level. But we definitely need a pullback on 15660. Could be, uh, yeah, if, we, if this pound really starts to um, lose some momentum here, I think that could be the area. But I would look primarily at the 158 area. So I would look for a couple of hundred point drop here and then look to buy and see how that sets up. So when the weekly pivots kick in, I will start to see how we behave around the weekly pivots and then I will look for positions. Pound Yen. Uh, again, lovely move up in the weekly. Uh, we are 15900. 15700 is decent support. Let's mark that on this one. Yeah, one five six. Oops, want to draw a line, okay. Yeah, that that is I would love to see the pound yen down at that level. Had a very, very quiet start to the week. ATMA crept around and as soon as we, we pull back to a major support level then we shot up. But we may come Monday, we may just retest that 8, hold this R2, and then start to leg up again. But we are RSI is higher, stochastics are crossing. So we are, we are, you know, a lot of these markets are very extended now. And with a quite, relatively quiet day to week ahead of us, uh, this could drift sideways. I like the pound and the euro um, Aussie dollar. This is the pound Aussie dollar. Uh, that's a close above the A. I I would I'm gonna buy at 170. 170 10 uh with a stop under that under Thursday's low. That looks good to me. I can see that retesting the highs. Uh Euro Yen uh really relatively quiet start of the week and then really motored up on Thursday. So I would this is one of my favourite charts. I think the Euro Yen 133.25 is a great place to to buy if we get the chance. Daily eight is right down here. May not come as low as that. 350 is obviously a good price, but that had a great week and a very nice close. Here's the Aussie. Here's the Euro Aussie. I should look at this straight after the pound Aussie. Um, ooh, yeah, that's a lot of resistance up there. So I would definitely stick to the nice move off the uh, weekly support level. Weekly eight is coming around nicely, very bullish. Um, so I, but I'm personally sticking to the pound Aussie dollar, not the euro Aussie dollar. Let's take a look at the Aussie US. So we've touched the major monthly pivot up there and so I would look to buy that. I think that's going to sell down to that monthly pivot around about the 9150 area. Two days of selling, ATMA is coming across. That 
ninety yeah that ninety three twenty is a very decent area of support again you know, like a lot of these charts coming off the RSI and stochastics on the daily but looking good on the weekly so stay tuned I'll come back to you on that one and report back so we've looked at the Dow let's have a quick look at the FTSE FTSE's got had a lot of trouble with this uh, 6690 and that close under the 8 I think uh, that is a short at 6597 and if we break 6540 then we're coming down to that monthly pivot 6500 let's look at the Nikkei uh, topping tail in the weekly come into a congested area up here on the weekly close so made a new high on the week close below that that's that's the sell signal. So retest fourteen thousand seven sixty. I'd expect to see monthly pivot retested. So there is a, a bearish tone to these markets with that uh, drop in the Dow. This oil has been stuck in this range from one hundred four to one hundred eight, apart from the peak up or back on the back of the Syria issue. And I would look to short at 106.40 to at least test 102.50. So we're stuck between the 50 and the 100 EMA here now. So that's not a great place to be, particularly with that support down there at 103.60. So I will be inclined. Well, the weekly 8 is, is still down there at 270. So I would short the high on that oil. Alright, I will look at gold. Huge sell off in the gold. I would short that at 1345 and expect that to come down and retest 1207. Just look at the US dollar yen. I, this is a nice hammer on the weekly support here, 9850 uh, area. I think if we come and touch some of these low areas again, come and touch the 9880 area then, I would look to buy that to see if that can punch up through 101, 102. Stocks, rolls, that's good, that's a little messy. We're trapped in a range, but 108 at 1085 is holding. That's a pot. That's a weak close on the weekly chart, so I think we're going to expect to see a bit more bumps before that starts to pick up. Lloyd's has been in the news a lot. That's sideways to weak. General had a great week. Um, I think that's a good buy. Ninety four, nine four two. Barclays fell out of the sky. So that is that's a hell of a bad weekly there. I would look to buy that one at two five five. I'm gonna put an alert at two five five. I think that is oversold, but I would like to pick it up at a lower price. Two seven two is major. Uh, look at that, we've got a gap down there at 266. I'm going to put an alert at 266. Can you just see that gap down here on the. Ah, uh, that was the uh, 2012 year end gap that we had on the Dow. Keep an eye on that one. I think uh, you can see it was making lower highs up here. So it was definitely due a uh, you know a pullback. I'm, I'm, so I'm looking at this as an opportunity for Barclays. I think the market have overreacted to issues Barclays got and Domino's. Very weak close. Yeah, we had a reversal bar on the weekly on Domino's. So that looks if I could be heading right back to five six five. So we just closed above the 50%, closed below the 50% next day. So that was a warning sign. RSI was high up there. 
Afrin, I have been watching Afrin. Sideways, uh, top and tails on the weekly, so I'm going to stay out of that one. Oh, excite! This one is uh, that's had a great week. This is an aim stock. Be very, very careful with this. 115. I think that's a buy at 115 because I think that's coming up to the 130 area. U.S. stocks. Uh, Lynn. That looks weaker. Weekly eight was hit and it dropped off. Google. Major resistance just above us. Goldman's. Struggling. Topping tail on the weekly. This dry ships was amazing. I did I did call this at two hundred. Don't know if anybody took any notice, but 200 to a high of 380. Yeah, dry ships has been amazing. You do not see that in forex. I hardly ever see that in forex in that period. So if you're not trading stocks, you should consider stocks. Apple is a mess. Um, that's a very weak close on Friday. And a quick look at. Unilever gapped up. That is now, if we see it, that's a gap, that's a buy at 25.26. If we see that, Telecity is uh, just rolled over. Eshore had a good week. That is now a buy at 2.42. Skyworks, I was watching. Nope, that's just not doing it. Serco, nope. Now Manico, let me look at the weekly on this one. Came in on the weekly eight and we got rejected. Sat between the fifty and uh, that's a, that's a hundred and a two hundred, I think. I do like. I don't think this is the right time to get into this one yet. But I would. I'm going to put an alarm on eighty-five sixty on this one. Okay, I'm going to put an alarm on the weekly pivot, uh, monthly pivot, sorry. Craft, that looked good to me last week. Ooh. Stay tuned, Cree. No. And then Greco. So, you can see you know, a lot of these stocks have come off. On the back of that chart in the Dow, so I think we could come. I think we could easily come all the way down to this monthly pivot if that uh, level breaks. But I want to get short higher. I would like to get short higher. And UK GDP on the US and UK GDP on. Thursday, I would look for some short selling the first part of the week, and then I'd love to get uh, down here to buy up ahead of that GDP, assuming the charts permit that. But short term, I am bearish on the Dow and look for pullbacks in the pound and the euro versus the dollar. All right, enjoy what's left of your weekend, and Monday's round table. I will do a short presentation on entries, the best entries for the week. Okay, I talk a lot about exits, I talk a lot about the, you know, the longer time frames, but um, by the time we meet on Monday at 7 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. Eastern time, we should have some clear idea about potential direction for the market for the week, and we can plot that up against uh, the open reaction in the US and the Euro. Alright, uh, I will leave it there and see you soon.